Hi, it is me, Jeff Sammons. I will be going over this section of the floral radiation biology class. This is the old 240 class, that's why it says 240 here. It's been changed around a little bit, but I'm just going to give you a general overview of the first couple chapters. I'll be doing this for a few chapters, not every single one, so you still need to read the book, unfortunately for you, and kind of go over things on your own. We're just going to hit the high points um, that I think need a little bit more attention from chapter to chapter. So starting with this, ionizing radiation, just radiation that produces positively and negatively charged particles, ions when passing through matter. Basically, you just need to know this definition um, of what radiation is, especially ionizing radiation since we're in this field. Uh, it can safely be controlled with proper education. Obviously, the more informed you are, the more aware of, of the risks you are. Uh, effective measures employed by radiation workers safeguard patients, personnel, and the general public from necessary exposure to ionizing radiation. So this is the very definition of radiation protection. So it's measures that we need to take um, as workers to safeguard not only our patients, but also the other people, um, including their guests, parents, um, caregivers, whoever that might be, and then general public from unnecessary exposure to ionizing. So what we're looking at in the general public is to kind of be aware of the orders you get and to kind of go through those and make sure they're not getting any unnecessary radiation. Biologic effects, what you need to know about that is this damage to living tissue of animals and humans exposed to radiation. So it has to be living tissue. You're not going to get biologic effects, things like um, x-ray metal or industrial uh, radiation. Energy deposit in living tissue by the radiation can be limited, thereby reducing the potential for biologic effects. So obviously, the less radiation, the less biologic effects. It's a straight line definition. Diagnostic efficacy, degree to which diagnostic study accurately reveals the presence or absence of a disease in the patient. Maximize essential radiographs produced under recommended radiation protection guidelines. So the attending physician carries this responsibility. They're going to weigh whether it's uh, in the patient's best interest to actually get this exam or if it's something like a rib fracture where they're not really going to do anything, then the doctor should decide, well, if we already know what's going on and what the prognosis is, as well as our treatment plan, then why bother doing x-rays? Alara, as you already know, as low as reasonably achievable. Keep the radi radiation exposure to as low as practical level. So or ORP is also the same thing as Alara. So it just means optimization for radiation protection. This is a newer term that's not quite sticking. Alara is basically the um, standard of what you'll use. If you are unfamiliar with this term still, it's probably time for you to find a new profession. Because no threshold exists for radiation-induced malignant disease, radiation exposure should always be kept Alara for all medical imaging procedures. That means collimating, that means keeping repeats to a minimum, um, as well as your shielding, a whole lot of, um, goes into the ARA concept. Let's see. So with this, I'm not going to read everything through. This is already getting redundant. So read this through. Uh, basically, on this slide, make sure that you follow up. Uh, patient needs to know what they do as a follow-up to this exam. So let them know what they can reasonably expect in terms of their results. And we can kind of go from there. Um, it's your responsibility to let them know. Patients aren't just automatically going to know. They go to x-ray and then they expect the results to just magically appear. You should let them know. It'll be three to four days normally. Sometimes same day. It just depends on your clinic. Background of equivalent radiation time. So this just compares um, the radiation they're receiving at their exam today to natural background factors. So what they would normally get in the course of just living and walking around. Um, method Let's see, it compares, let's say, a chest x-ray, natural background radiation. So you can say it's the same amount that you would get in basically 10 days of just walking around this planet, depending on where you live. Some places have higher radiation doses um, just because of altitude, but you can kind of say that a chest x-ray is about equal to what you would get in about 10 days. Uh, radiation is defined as energy in transit from one location to another. Only X and gamma rays are classified as ionizing radiations. So these two have the res um, enough power to remove electrons from their orbits. So we're going to go over that in the, the interactions that's covered in chapter 3, I believe. Genetic damage, that's radiation damage to the generations yet unborn. So that's to the ova, 
and the sperm. Uh, shielding is almost always the most uh, effective means to protect against this. Organic damage and significant exposure to organs such as decreased white blood cell count. You get that. Generally you could probably infer that maybe leukemia is on its way. There are not enough white blood cells there. This little slide here. Pass for shielding, which is good for a chest x-ray. Fail for dressing instructions. Sources of radiation with natural background. You'll have three types, basically terrestrial, cosmic, and internal. We will cover all three starting now. Terrestrial radiation from radioactive materials within the Earth's crust. So basically in the soil and underneath is where you'll get terrestrial radiation. Um, definitely rocks that are underneath that soil and make that up as well um, as part of terrestrial radiation. 55% of the gross common exposure to humans natural background radiation comes from radon. So radon is a gas. It's colorless, odorless. Um, it has heavy radioactive radioactivity. Um, it's always present to some degree. Um, it's basically going to come in through your uranium, radium underneath the ground, it kind of creates this gas, which is radon, which kind of seeps through, usually within the foundation, um, if there are cracks within the slab. Um, it's very hard to detect. Um, there are radon sensors nowadays that are kind of integrated with smoke detectors, so they can see if there's any radon kind of seeping in. The second leading cause of lung cancer, about 20,000 per year, so a significant amount. You could probably guess the first leading cause of lung cancer is cigarette. Um, extraterrestrial origin is where you'll get cosmic radiation. This is basically from the sun and other stars out there. Um, intensity based on al altitude. So basically where you live, if you live like in Denver, with a mile high city, that means you're actually closer to the cosmic radiation, so you get a little bit more exposure. But you don't see people just falling over dead in Denver every day, so it's a very minimal amount of radiation. Nothing to get worried about, but um, be aware that there are some places that have a little bit more exposure than others. Um, magnetic field helps shield some of those cosmic rays, not all of them. Average dose to the U.S. about 30 millirems per year, so very, very small in the amount. Internal radiation, this is basically from the foods or air inhaled as well as absorption through the skin. Usually it's through um, eating because the food you eat generally comes from the soil. So with that, it goes inside the body. As it gets inside the body, it's much more damaging than if it was just outside. Because if it's outside source of radiation, your skin will protect a little bit before it actually gets to things like the blood. But once it gets inside, then it's more, it's a little bit closer to the bloodstream and can cause a little bit more problems. Um, certain types migrate to different areas of the body, including the thyroid. Thyroid is just a little bit more sensitive to the effects of radiation. Bone, not quite as much. The thyroid is obviously a little bit more sensitive to that. At all three, about 295 millirems per year or 2.95 sieverts, so not a ton, but it does make up the amount of radiation that everybody pretty much gets. Man-made or artificial radiation, so this is created by people um, for various things, air travel, nuclear fuel, fallout, weapons, etc. Medical radiation is also on that list. Trib is about 0.65 millisieverts to the average annual population. So again, not very much. It is going up um, in recent years with the development of CT. Um, so we do need to be aware of that and kind of keep an eye on dosages received. Uh, let's see. Diagnostic medical x-ray machines and nuclear medicine procedures are the two largest sources of artificial radiation. I don't know if it's still true with nuclear medicine. CT is obviously a huge amount of radiation that people are getting. I don't have the exact numbers on that, but I know that it is going up in the last 20 years as more and more physicians are ordering CTs instead of um, regular diagnostic x-rays. Exposure pathways. This is just a little diagram that kind of shows you where the radiation comes from. Um, rocks and soil, you know, the water, aquatic area. Everything kind of deposited is a little bit of radiation around the way, so it's a little bit hard to kind of get away from it fully, so you have to kind of appease patients' worries and fears about it the best you can. Radiation in the news, if you hear about radiation, it's almost always bad news. It's very sensationalistic to kind of point it out 
and mentioned how dangerous it could be. Pretty much the Marvel brand is based all on radiation. If you think about all the characters and stuff that have created with Spider-Man, bitten by a radioactive spider. I think this is from a recent movie that I cannot remember right away. The Watchmen, I believe. Simpsons and their three-eyed fish from the nuclear plant. That's always a good one to get a couple chuckles. Gamma radiation, creating the Hulk. Um, basically, you just have to kind of take it with a grain of salt and kind of educate the general public about how it is because they don't know any better. They haven't taken any classes. They don't know the dose rates. So it's really up to the technologist to kind of appease their fears and anxiety. Well, that is it. Um, we'll have some more of these put up from time to time. Make sure you do go over the book, though. This is just hitting a few of the more interesting points or things we need to talk about a little bit more in depth. Some things aren't, won't be as clear as other things will be a little bit more technical or based on theories, so just uh, be aware of that. And if you have questions, then certainly email me at any time.